I'm just kidding. Come on in. I've been waiting for you. Welcome. We're going to quickly close the door. Uh, I maintain air quality inside the house to a pristine level. And in Los Angeles, air quality is sometimes compromised. I measure air quality inside and outside, so I, I always know. So we don't leave the door open. If we go in and out, then we make sure we close it. A lot of people have wanted to see a tour of the house of Blueprint Central. So let me show you around. Uh, first, this general area here. This is where we have the Blueprint Supper. So I've been doing this for the past year or so. We get the first supper, we get 12 people here and we talk about the future of being human. And it's some of my most favorite experiences of life of, of going through the process of understanding where we're at, where we're going. And typically people experience a few existential crises <laughs> during the dinner. So it's two and a half hours long, but here we have a lot of fun. And then we can look out on the greenery as we do so. so it's a re really nice backdrop. Talmadge has his workstation over here, but I love greenery, I love plants. Uh, but really I try to maintain as minimalist as a life as possible. We were playing Settlers of Catan, a board game we've played for quite some time. So over here is kind of like, uh, this is the only place in the house that really is unorganized and it's kind of like new therapy drops here. We just started testing, we just bought a test kit for water to see what the quality of the, of the drinking water was. These are some red light therapies. This is a laser cap. This is a blood pressure device. Yeah, this is a infrared, I guess, red light therapy for the brain. That's what the baby had. <laughs> yeah, a friend gave this to me as a gift. I thought it was really creative. So these are some nail polishes. I painted my fingernails in the past because I think it's fun. I grew up in a culture where you could not paint your fingernails. It was a no-no, it was naughty. And then I became an adult and all of a sudden I could do these things I never could as a kid and painting my fingernails was one. So it has nothing to do with blueprint, it has nothing to do with my health, it has nothing to do with other than I really enjoy it. So this is uh, non-toxic fingernail paint. Oh, let me show you over here. This is the supplement closet. These are all the supplements I take and they're alphabetized and there's a year supply of each one. People look at this and they think it's OCD. It's not, it's organization and it's how we do things at Blueprint. And so if we're trying to do things for the body, we need to be as precise as possible and having everything organized is the best starting point. The second thing you will note if you look in here is there's nothing naughty in here. So if you want to be at the house, if you're at my house, and we're hanging out, we're having fun, and you feel naughty, and you wanna come in here, I mean, let's just look. What could you do to be naughty? I mean, you could cocoa, you could have some cocoa powder, you know, but that, that's not gonna be like a real treat. It's like we've got some pecan, some raw pecans. That might be a good one. So the, the key things to remember about the pantry, it's organized because we like things precise. And two is if you're naughty and you wanna be at my house, we're not going to have naughty things to do in the traditional fashion. Now, we might be able to come up with other naughty things to do. I don't know what that could be, but it's not gonna be uh, indulgent in junk food sort of way. Let, let me show you some other parts of the house. So this is the kitchen. This is a rose we've kept here at the house. A few of our friends, they've, they've um, left notes. Don't lose hope. <laughs> Already did. <laughs> so there's been a note writing game around this flower. Home for the dead, but we do appreciate its presence. A few of you have commented that uh, this house, which I bought a couple years ago, has a gas stove. So I don't use that gas stove. I bought this low cost electric stove which I use for all warming up now. I think it was $50 or so. I was taking this supplement as part, this is on the Blueprint website, and my skin started turning a little yellow. And that's because of the lutein in this. So I took 20 milligrams a day for about a year and it can build up in the skin. And so my skin had a, a slight yellow tint. So I've now stopped taking this. Let me show you my fridge. It's pretty bare. All right, first we have 
the berries that we use that go into nutty pudding. And then we have a few pomegranate seeds, two avocados, some fermented foods. We have quite a bit of uh, nortotropin, which is human growth hormone, which I started to regenerate my thymus. The th thymus is a gland responsible for your immune system, or we're trying to regenerate it. So we have an MRI looking at my thymus 100 days ago, and we have it of today. So we're going to see if this therapy is actually uh, rejuvenating my thymus. This is uh, an RX, a, a custom prescription for hair formulation that we've designed. So we have a custom compound of pharmacy, make this, we keep it in the fridge. This is 17 alpha estradiol, which is a non-feminizing uh, version of estrogen. A few other uh, prescriptions that we're doing final work on for Blueprint. And then I have a couple bottles of wine. I stopped drinking wine because it was too expensive from a caloric perspective. Three ounces, I think was around 72 calories. So when I have friends over, I'll offer them a glass of wine. Some say yes, some say don't. Alcohol in moderation is reasonable. A uh, blueprint is not to tell people what they should or should not do. It's meant to follow the data. The science on alcohol, there's a number of different uh, conclusions people have drawn in terms of no alcohol or moderate alcohol. Uh, I don't do alcohol at all, uh, primarily from a caloric perspective, uh, but also because it just wrecks my sleep if it's anywhere close to my bedtime. And then finally over here in the family room, this is where we hang out. This is where Talmadge sits. You can see the indentation of his body. I sit right here, and then I also do a lot of stretching. I, I enjoy moving around when we're hanging out. We just, we played ping pong a, <laughs> for like a couple hours the other day. So we have our ping pong stuff that is out. Talmadge and I spend a lot of time in this room uh, reading books, having conversations, and watching things. Uh, for example, just like Talmadge, when I grew up, we didn't watch anything that was rated R or even PG-13. So as a, an adult in my mid-30s, there was this huge uh, number of movies that I had never seen in my entire life. And I didn't understand cultural references or what people would talk about. I was just oblivious. And so I'd find myself in conversations with people and I have no idea what's going on. I was so naive. And I think people around me were just always surprised like, how do I not know these basic things about our society? And so a lot of this is getting Talmadge up to speed on the things he didn't get familiar with in his earlier years of life. So we do that. Let me show you four books right now that I have Talmadge reading. Uh, one is The Biography of Zero. This is one of the most important books I've ever read in my entire life. The number zero had to be invented. It, uh, we think of it as a common sense thing and modern society is built upon it from computer code to mathematics. It's zero is really a modern, the modern infrastructure of our time. And so this book is a biography of how zero was invented. It took hundreds of years. It broke philosophies and societies and math. It's a remarkable book and it's the basis of a lot of my thinking. I've given Talmadge maybe 20, 30, 40 books <laughs> that keep on piling up. I want him to be situated in life with a really nice foundation of cultural awareness, of uh, philosophical thought. Like his schooling is not giving him what I think he needs as a foundational basis on how to understand the world and how to think. So I try to uh, put that together for him. All right, so that's this room. Let me show you my office. It's a, this is a pretty modest setup. I wanted to look out into the, the garden area of the house. There's a bunch of greenery out here, which is really nice. But yeah, one screen, one computer. Talmadge left me this note. You're going to absolutely obliterate today. From anonymous, that was really nice of him. And um, so we, this is my primary workstation. And then we, I do a bunch of interviews, podcasts, whatnot over here where we have a camera set up. I don't love the, the wire setup. It's a little messy for me. It's okay. We're improvising right now. We're trying to find a better system. And then just plants here. So I really, again, try to keep a very minimalist environment. I like to do most of my experience in my own mind. As to where I work, it's really pretty fluid. I mean, I, ha I have this set up here, but I also, every day I'm traveling to do some therapy or some appointment for Blueprint, also at the Colonel office. So I'm kind of out and about everywhere. And so um, there's no one place I think I would call my permanent space. Let me take you upstairs to the Blueprint clinic where I spend quite a bit of time. All right, first, 
First thing to look at before you come to the clinic, one of my teammates put this up. Welcome to the future. Caution may cause loss of age. All right. I'll start over here and we'll do a quick circle. Blueprint is powered by measurement. It's the ability to measure something in the body which gives us information on whether something is working or not. And so we try to measure everything we can. This is a multi-spectral imaging device. So you put your chin here, your forehead here, and then you can move the machine about. It's an entire view of your face and it will give you a 10 biomarkers uh, for your face aging. And it shows you things that the naked eye can't see. So this is how I got my children to wear sunscreen. I would tell them to wear sunscreen when outside and they'd be like, dad, enough. And then I showed them their face and their UV damage. Uh, and then they said, okay, we will wear sunscreen. It's alarming and terrifying because your face looks like a zombie. This device looks at AGEs. Uh, it's used for cardiovascular health. You put your arm here, it uses light and it measures the, basically the junk in your, your skin, your AGEs. This is a professional grade hearing system. I do have hearing loss in my left ear. It's aged 64, uh, caused by a uh, firearm. I, had a, I shot a lot of guns as a kid. And so we're trying to rejuvenate my hearing. So we do a lot of hearing tests. These two systems are for uh, skin therapies. This is a two wavelengths. This is a 532 nanometers and then 1064. So it's just uh, two specific lasers. This is uh, what's called IPL, intense pulse light, works on a spectrum, but they have different functions for the skin. So again, we do these things and we measure them with our devices so we can see if the effect we want uh, is being achieved. This is a medical grade ultrasound system. A lot of people are familiar with ultrasound as looking at babies in the womb. This is what you would see in the hospital. And we use this device for my whole body. So we look at my lungs and heart and liver, pancreas, prostate, tendons and ligaments and brain. So everything, and we, use, we do it on a frequent basis. So for example, when I got COVID in November, we were able to see in real time what was happening to my lungs and my heart. It was pretty bad and it was alarming because I had a pretty mild case of COVID. I had a fever for 24 hours. I felt pretty bad for a couple of days, but it wasn't a terrible case. And even though I didn't feel that bad, the damage we saw in my lungs and heart were significant. And so it really uh, brought home to me the, the value of measurement is we oftentimes are not able to uh, be aware of what's happening inside of our body and measurement brings it to light. And so having this so accessible was, was useful. And um, I guess that's the whole point of Blueprint is we're, we're trying to share that measurement is really useful in making important decisions about our health and wellness. This is a, a cooler system. So when we do some of these skin therapies, they can be very painful and this blows cold air to lessen that pain. And then this is a high frequency electromagnetic stimulation. So this basically makes muscles contract. And uh, this device here can be used over the abdomen, which this is like 20,000 sit-ups in a 30 minute time frame. And then this guy here, this works out the pelvic floor. So you sit on this and then you want to move around and find just the right spot. And it feels like if you were to have a feeling of flatulating, and you want to keep it in, like you were at a party and you didn't want to do it, that's the feeling it, uh, it produces of, it just tightens everything up. So what we were trying to solve is um, trying to improve my sleep. And so I was getting up on average one time per night to go to the bathroom, which is normal. I wanted to get up zero times because I would get better sleep. And so by strengthening the pelvic floor and the bladder, we wondered, would that be possible that it, having a stronger bladder would eliminate my need to get up at night to go to the bathroom. And then what we found is that it also produced uh, more nighttime erections. A journalist came and spoke to me about this. And after they had written the story, their editors were like, so what do we do for penis health? And I was like, funny you ask. Now at this point, I didn't realize I was on the record in talking about this. I thought I was just passing along information uh, because they had been involved. And this got information that got published in an article and then it became a whole thing, but it was never my intent to publish it. So now it's out. Uh, this thing did dramatically uh, improve. Like it was like every time I'd wake up, 
uh, I'd be having an erection. And then we looked into the literature, and of course, nighttime erections are age-related. So they are, there's more of them, and they're stronger the younger you are, and it declines with age. So this is commonly what happens with Blueprint is we go into a given area of research, we find our objectives, we go after it, and then we have some other things we find out along the way. And the final thing I'll show you is this is our red light therapy. I'd say we've had uh, mixed results with this technology. We, it's, it's good, I think, for you know, uh, recovery and just general wellness, but we've not seen results compelling enough that makes us feel excited about it. So I will, I'll stand in here. This, so basically, uh, I previously had this system uh, sitting above a massage table and it would just do, we did 12 minutes three times a week, but it took twice as long so that I would have to flip my body and do front and back. So we put these things up in parallel to see if we can do a full body. But then these legs here, I've got to separate my legs out. So it's not great. The stands just kind of make it hard. So it's like, I don't know, it's suboptimal with the way it is now. Uh, but it's also, we're, we're kind of, we have mixed, uh, we have a mixed assessment on whether it's worth it and belongs in our protocol for the time allocation. So we, we try to be a fully capable clinic. Uh, you know, we draw blood here, we spin it. We have all the tests. These are like the, the DNA methylation, speed of aging tests. This is the accumulation of stuff. We have a bunch of hardware scales that we have accumulated over the years. The clinic is always evolving. So when we find out we will buy some equipment and start some therapies, if they don't meet our thresholds of efficacy, we just get rid of it. And so what you see today is a snapshot, but if you were to come back in a week or two, it would be changed. And that's very true on a six month time scale where we're just an entirely different project in that kind of time frame. So yeah, so the clinic is here at the house. It's useful to be able to work and then do all the blueprint stuff in one, uh, in one physical space. Cool, let me show you my bedroom. Uh, we, I went through uh, quite a bit of this in the evening routine, but I keep this room blacked out. It never sees the light of day. I've got two air filters to maintain air quality. This is a, a copper infused pillow. These sheets are grounded, which I went over. I've been playing with this HIV device, Pulsetto. If I wake up at night, uh, I can put this on and do this for 10 minutes. It puts me back to sleep pretty quickly. Uh, but this is, we're trialing this out. Yeah, and I really don't do anything in here except for sleep. Never work, I don't hang out. It's just really for sleep. I walk in, I go to bed. My average uh, sleep onset time is four minutes. So I go to sleep very fast. And that hygiene really helps where I don't sit down, lay in bed for an hour trying to go to sleep. Go to the bathroom. We've been in here uh, several times now with various videos. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on here, but we, um, Everything has a purpose. And so we're, we are always trialing new things. We're evaluating whether it works or not. Some things make the cut, some things don't, but it's just a constant experiment. That's probably what you've seen throughout the house is the house is just, uh, the blueprint is everywhere <laughs> in all its forms, new arrivals, the implementation stage where the, the phase out phase. Let's look at the closet. I try to maintain this in a uh, organized fashion. So my fashion philosophy, I'd maybe describe it in, I'm either on one of two ends of the spectrum. One is I don't put any thought into what I'm wearing at all. It's like the most basic thing because my mind is entirely on the future of intelligent existence and clothing is just like the last thing on my mind. But then I also really appreciate dressing well and in unconventional ways. I find it to be an expression of creativity I love artistic expression in clothing. So I kind of have this battle where I want to dress really well and artistically and in unusual ways. It just sometimes doesn't make the cut for my effort of I'm either thinking about the future of intelligent existence or this thing and I'm so far on this side all the time that I rarely tr travel over to the other side even though I want to do it. So Talmadge is a pretty immaculate person. You can see he most 17 year olds do not have this kind of cleanliness, but Talmadge is uh, clean, organized, and very thoughtful about his surroundings. Now we've seen the upstairs, let's go downstairs. I'll show you where I work out. Every morning when I'm going through my routine, uh, I'll come out here and work out. The first thing I do is the sled. 
So I put turf down on this concrete area so that the sled could be passed uh, back and forward. You can see it's a little worn out. Uh, <laughs> that's a good sign. I've been doing it every day. The pool here, I, I kind of have mixed emotions about because I don't, you, I, I don't love the water. And even though I have been swimming as part of uh, the blueprint protocol, I don't use it as much as I'd like. And so I, I spent quite a bit of time looking into an alternative way to use this space. I looked at ways to fill the pool with, um, well, I wondered if I could basically get rid of the pool and instead have a greenhouse so I could grow all my own food. With that idea, I looked at getting rid of the pool, but doing that's pretty tricky. You have to fill the pool with dirt or cement. You can't just take the water out. You can't just put a, you know, wood over the top of it. It's a pretty big project and every time we found a potential solution. It was a lot of money, a lot of effort, a lot of time. I just haven't moved forward because this house is great. I love being here. I'm probably also going to move sometime in the near future. So I just haven't done the big projects here. I'd like to find a new space somewhere where I could build it out exactly how I wanted it uh, for the entirety of what we're trying to build with Blueprint. We'll do a quick stop on the ping pong table. So Talmadge and I play a lot of ping pong and I historically have beat him uh, a lot. He's been working on a new technique uh, that he hits the ball really low and he spins it. And when he does it, I can't hit back. So this past weekend, I beat him uh, four straight games and then he came back in the last two and just destroyed me. It was something like 21 to like six. So I need to figure out what to do because my game is not at his level and it took him a little while to figure this thing out, but he's just destroying me now. So need to figure out what to do on that one. So this is Jim. This is my happy place. The favorite thing I did in here was putting up this wallpaper. I love being in the forest. I love trees. I love nature. When I bought this house, this was a car garage. I parked my car out here. I put UV tint on the windows there. Yeah, we have two air filters in here again for clean air. I'm actually sad that I can only exercise for a certain amount of time every week. I, I work to stay within the exact bounds of where the science suggests the benefits of, of exercise happen. But then if you exceed those, then you potentially get into some negative areas uh, in terms of uh, overall longevity benefits. And so I'm kind of sad. I only get a really small budget of exercise every week. And so I'll, I'll typically come in here and I'll have several ideas in my mind that I'm working on. I don't really think about my workout. I think about the ideas. Because maybe that's like the theme for the entire house tour today. I'm most interested in the experience of mind and, uh, and more importantly, the future experience of mind not just now because I think what we have now is possibly uh, extremely limited to what it could be. And so I'm trying to make that jump to what it could be and live in that space or try to bridge to that space. And yeah, my life is really structured around that. This is pretty exciting. When we were out in the gym, uh, Jamie stopped by. Jamie comes by every day and this is tomorrow's food. First is super veggie in the morning. Uh, I just went back to a blended version last week. So we did a, a semi chopped version of super veggie for about a month or two. And it takes me about 34 minutes to eat. It's, it's so many vegetables. And I wanted to go back and try the puree version. So this is pureed. And it's been really nice to go back to the pureed version of it. And then this is what nutty pudding looks like. This is, I also add two scoops of pea protein. So sweet potato and she tried to make a vegan poke uh, with beets, jalapenos, looks like there's some onions, parsley. Is that right, Jamie? Yeah, cilantro. Cilantro. That looks exciting, doesn't it? So that's, and then we have a few avocados uh, that Talmadge and I will occasionally add. We have spent years perfecting this diet. Every single calorie has to fight for its existence. Nothing's included here because it's a nice to have, cool to have. It is all with a specific objective in mind, but that gives you a rough idea of daily diet and the wonderful Jamie 
who makes it such a spectacular experience every day. I enjoyed hanging out with you today. Thank you for coming along uh, for the tour. I guess my signature move has been saying something at the end of these videos that has nothing to do with the objective of the video. It's just what's on my mind. I'll tell you two things really fast. Uh, one is I'm planning the first gathering around trying to make life corrections in uh, 10 days. We're, we're working on trying to eliminate uh, bad behaviors in life. So I've been thinking through the idea that oftentimes when we look at the world and we want to change the world, we want the world to be a better place, we look at the world and we identify all the things we want to be changed, all the other people we want them to change. Rarely do we go through that assessment and say, you know what, I want the world to be this way and I want the world to change this way. Therefore, I'm going to change myself and be what I want the world to become, which I think is a really nicely timed way to understand uh, humanity right now. The second thing in my mind is how nice all of you have been to me in the past week. When Blueprint first came to Global Notoriety in January, it felt like 98% of the global commentary was hate, acrimony and vitriol. It felt overwhelmingly negative. There was a few teeny tiny bright spots where people were like, hey, this might be interesting. And with this last video we did on the nighttime routine, then also the plasma exchange, I was so touched by the overwhelming expression of love and support. So. I, I want to say thank you to each of you for taking the time and writing a heartfelt no a note of appreciation or thank you. I really appreciate it very much. Uh, I'm working very, very hard. I hope what we're doing is useful to you and to the world. I hope it makes the world a better place. I hope it's something that the 25th century, I hope we are around in the 25th century. I hope we look back to this time now and we say, you know what? That's the time period where we really got our stuff together and we fixed a bunch of things that were holding us back. But I just really appreciate the support you're lending my way. Uh, it's energizing and it feels wonderful to be seen. And I, I feel motivated to work even harder trying to bring value into your life. So thank you very much. That's the house tour. Thank you for hanging out with me. I really enjoy doing this with you. As a secret, I'll tell you, I showed you the above ground stuff, the super villain stuff, it's down below. Stay tuned for that.